Okay. Hello guys and girls, welcome back to Geekism, my name is John T, we are here in Planet Coaster in our Let's Build series. Over in the Pirate area, we're starting work on possibly the biggest thing we've built in the park yet. We're building a log flume. Uh, it's going to be very much in the style of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, which isn't really a true log flume, it's more of a boat ride. Uh, but unfortunately we don't have one of those in the game just yet. So we're building a log flume, but in that sort of style, lots of story, lots of set pieces, lots of animatronics as we go through. Uh, the main feature is this huge weenie. I know we all love the term weenie in the Blondie Coaster community. <laughs> uh, a weenie basically is a large uh, piece of scenery that is used to usher people into a park. So Disney used these a lot. The term weenie is actually coined by Walt Disney. And um, they use them a lot to sort of usher people through areas of the park, the castle, uh, space mountain, all things like that. So we're starting off with a large mountain. And this is heavily influenced by two other Disney rides, actually. First being, uh, well, not really a ride, but Typhoon Lagoon, which is one of the uh, Disney water parks over in Florida, has this huge uh, ship. It's actually uh, more of a tugboat ship uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the water park. Yeah, but it's perched up on top of this mountain. The story is that a huge typhoon has ravaged this uh, beautiful scenic area and all this flotsam and jetsam everywhere and, and, uh, and there's this huge uh, tugboat sitting on top and every now and again water spurts at the top of this and it sets off the wave machine. It's fantastic, great bit of scenery, great bit of theming. So I loved the idea of that and so we've kind of replicated it here using the shipwreck pieces to form a boat. Love how these pieces fit together to create a, uh, a near enough full sort of uh, shipped wreck bow thing it looks fantastic so we've done that once that in place we start building the log flume itself a lot of it's going to be indoors uh, which is something i'm regretting now because it's really tricky to build underground it's the first time we've had to do it properly um and yeah it's it's pretty tough it's pretty tough to get uh, the camera in where you want and to be able to see what's going on and this video is actually a little shorter than it was going to be because I actually tried to build out one of the set pieces uh, and then I turned the lights off, turned the, turned the daytime off and it looks awful and water has a weird issue in the dark, it sort of makes all the water go black and all the special effects go black so I was just wasn't having the best time with it at all so uh, I ripped it out and I'm going to have a little look at it, maybe look at a few other videos of people who have worked uh, you know underground and stuff like that but uh, yeah it's it's going to be a bit of a long process this one I think the log flume is probably going to be about three or four videos devoted just to this ride but I'm sure you'll agree um, it's starting to look pretty good pretty epic it's about time we built a big epic ride in the park we are obviously going to be going into coasters and stuff as well uh, but the wild west park uh, I always had in my head that was going to be a, uh, a bit of a sort of kid friendly area family friendly area because the, uh, the, the the coaster that sort of fits with wild west is the mine train that's always known as very much as a family coaster so i always bear that in mind obviously the log flume is a very family ride as well uh, but the pirates also we're going to be having a few different coasters pretty sure we're going to go with the hybrid coaster uh, and maybe another one depending on the size and space obviously because this is underground there's actually a lot of space above it um, that we could build a coaster over. I think that would work quite well. Uh, you'll see at the moment it's just sort of all open and, and so where we've cut in to, to build the thing but eventually we'll fill all that back in and make it look nice and you actually won't see much of the log flume uh, from a sort of higher point so it would probably be a good idea to use that uh, as, a, as a coaster area. Here I'm trying to make the uh, log flume come straight up into the weenie because I wanted a, another uh, Disney piece of uh, scenery here and that is Splash Mountain in uh, in most of the Disney parks there's a Splash Mountain actually and Splash Mountain is a log flume a proper log flume it's not a boat ride it's a full-on log flume uh, it's themed around zippity doodah and um, oh is it Song of the South I think the film was originally called and it's an old sort of it's very sort of family friendly lots of characters uh, it's all about Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox and he's, you know Br'er Rabbit always foils Br'er Fox and all this um, but the main feature here is this large weenie uh, that the log flume comes shooting out of. And uh, the also other key feature is the log flume uh, carries on underneath the area. So it's uh, you'll see we're trying to do it here. It takes me a couple of goes to get this right actually because I wanted the path to come quite close to it. So people would be able to walk past and see it. 
Uh, obviously, you know, it, it doesn't really matter to people in this game. They don't notice uh, rides or anything, but, you know, just for a, a realistic point of view, I wanted that to happen. So I had the idea of building a uh, sort of path upwards and couldn't really get it looking right. So we end up actually taking this. I probably should have cut this bit of video, unfortunately, because it, it ends up all being taken away. Uh, but the key feature of it is, is that the log flume goes down and through the ground and carries on underneath a little bit of a and then comes slowly comes back up again which is what we're going to do here uh, but end up rather than having the end of the log flume at ground level uh, we actually take it further down like that so it ends up being a pretty steep drop pretty intense drop actually and then uh, and then we bring it back up and out there we go and again all this will slowly be filled in over time uh, with different set pieces buildings and all that you're actually going to see very little of the log flume uh, from the sort of uh, map area such as overhead view when we're finished there we go and then we finally sort of cap that all off with a bit of a uh, bit of terrain work there and uh, there we go sort of make it a decent area so now it goes in and it carries on much further down notice the ship was a little bit uh, fat I guess was the word probably when, when you looked at it from a bit further away so we just sort of stretch it all out a little Um, I was having trouble selecting those uh, bits of seaweed they have a slightly strange collision uh, collision box on them but there you go just sort of stretching it all out so it looks a bit more like a boat okay uh, so the next thing I want to do is take like I say take the path a little bit closer just so it's uh, you know a bit more part of the part of the experience there and then we need to start filling in the hole here pardon, pardon the expression <laughs> uh, and again this is very much taken from Splash Mountain uh, the idea in Splash Mountain is that they're going to oh I forget what it's called now um, but it's like a thorny patch that it looks like you're going to go into this thorny patch and we have these great sort of bramble pieces from the spooky theme that I thought and some dead trees I thought would work really well and although it's not massively piratey uh, I just think it sort of caps the uh, the area off nicely and uh, and and makes it look like uh, like from from the path at least the log flume is getting smashed into these thorns and uh, and uh, a bit of twig and uh, and it's a, ca it's a case of using some of the special effects here as well to again sort of make the hole look interesting <laughs> uh, the hole with a W and without I suppose and, uh, using some of these to pull back a little bit into the uh, and some creosote bushes as well to pull back into the terrain make it look a little bit more natural and we do the same around here as well so there are about four or five set pieces in this ride that are going to be we're looking at having uh, i asked the patrons what they thought would be a good idea so we've had lots of suggestions on the patron page uh, of what we can build and some of the suggestions included a pirate town shanty town with lots of music and probably a band and, and all that sort of stuff which i think is a great idea uh, and then also going into a pirate battle and they're finally getting their wish of a Kraken. That's all I ever get asked for, either in live stream chat or Patreon chat, that we've got to get a Kraken in there somewhere. And I think this would be the ideal spot to do it. So we're going to have a Kraken battle underneath the ground there with uh, a couple of the pirate ships. And then also, um, a couple of the suggestions suggested sort of like a ghost pirate, sort of pirate jail type theme. Uh, and that's actually what we end up doing in this episode once we've finished off this drop here. Um, originally, I really wanted to go for sort of like you know ghost pirates, very pirates of the Caribbean, you know the whole sort of moonlight and stuff. But I really just kind of struggled. With, we're a little bit limited, obviously, with the scenery we've got. Uh, there's only sort of one or two skeleton pieces, and they're uh, very highly themed. Uh, one is connected to like a board. Uh, that you hang on the wall and the other one is in a cage so it would be nice to we have some skeleton pieces and maybe just sort of uh you know bones that we could build our own skeleton out like a modular skeleton system would be fantastic so we could do a little bit more with them so for now we're a little bit limited but I, so we basically just kind of build like an abandoned jail uh, but i may go back in the future if i can get a little bit more inspiration and sort of make it a little bit more sort of ghosty piratey uh, but obviously we use some of this mist and uh, low lighting and all things like that uh, here we set some triggers of water so you'll see that now when the uh, when the log flume hits that area the water splashes up and it looks as if it's just dived straight into a huge puddle it hasn't actually it's got about another 15 20 feet to go before it hits the uh, before it hits the bottom uh, but it's just a way of again sort of creating some movement some atmosphere uh, that you can see from the path it takes a while to figure this out for some reason the um oh that's right the uh, the track here goes slightly up you because of autocomplete it's not enough to get the uh, log flumes round so we have to raise it up a little higher so there's a very slight uh, decline from the top of that hill there into the station 
and then they all run around fine normally. I wanted to get them running so I could use see the triggers for the water here. You can see as they get around, you'll see the water. It's a bit tricky to see in the sped up version, but there will be a uh, a time a, a sort of glamour shot at the end where we can see it. And they end up pretty happy with that. So it's time to go underground. Uh, it's tricky. I won't lie, it is tricky. Still not happy with how that boat looks. I have a couple of messes with it a few more times. It's time to go underground and start working on some of the jail area. And we knock out the blue as well and turn it into a brown colour, make it a little bit more natural looking. And, uh, and it's time to dive into that hole and figure out what we're doing. So this tunnel at the moment is just the uh, the auto tunneled area. It's quite shallow. If you put your hands up, you could probably catch it. And I don't mind that sometimes, you know, a little tight tunnel, claustrophobia, you know, adds to the ride. But uh, for a lot of the part, we want it to be a little bit wider. So it's a case of going around with the push tool on the train and uh, just sort of knocking it all up a little. So you can see what's going on. The log flumes are coming past. That's what that splash is. Uh, and then we start on our first little set piece. We don't do much here because, to be honest with you, the log flumes don't even see it. They, they come flying past it, really. It's more just that I didn't want to have just a, a huge tunnel with nothing really happening. So uh, so we open it up and again we're going for the idea of a jail set up here and uh, one thing I really wanted to do is use a combination of wall pieces and the natural stone to create a sort of carved away look. So uh, I would really wanted the feel of you know people who've come down here and carved uh, oh, excuse me, oh, yawning myself, off, oh, terrible, it's very early in the morning here, sorry. <laughs> so they're carving away at the brick and uh, adding in stone pieces where they need to create support. And uh, that's something I wanted to do, you'll see here. Uh, I think it looks really, really smart, it's a really nice technique and definitely something I'm going to be looking at using a lot more of in this ride. And um, then we just sort of cap it off with a few window pieces, uh, a few bits of other scenery, uh, these sort of awesome little ringlet things I, lo I love them I think they look great uh, really simple but a really nice little piece of decoration a few barrels and because uh, you know it's a pirate ride you've got to have barrels in there and some stocks so again it's quite a lightly themed little area that uh, like I said the, the, the coat the, I realized just as I started building it that the uh, the log flume pieces just come absolutely flying past it so there wasn't really too much point in spending a lot of time there because even on a, uh, a ride POV you're not going to see much uh, I then thought the idea of rather than having just a natural tunnel, we could have uh, a brick tunnel going into this next area so it looks a little bit more formed and a little bit more sort of purposeful. Uh, this isn't finished, uh, I just wanted to get the basic layout here so I could see how much space I've got to use at the other end for our main set piece, which uh, down in this area at least, which is going to be the jail. Uh, so we need to come back in here and do a little bit more work, tie it into the, uh, to the uh, terrain area there a little bit more. Uh, but it actually looks really, cool, really quite smart, I think. There's a little bit problem with the train here where I've pressed smooth. So I need to go back and just sort of edit that in again. So it looks uh, like it did before. Just take a second. Okay, and then we need to open this area up. So the technique I'm using here then is I'm just sort of digging in with the push tool. And then once I've got a little bit of land I can purchase on, I'm using the flattened foundation. Uh, and that creates a really nice sort of flat cave. Um, which we can use for our set piece. One thing I noticed was uh, right near the log flume, it struggles to flatten them out a little bit, creates these peaks. And I actually thought they look quite smart. They could make, they could look like stalactites and stalagmites. So we actually go back and add a few of our own ones of those as well. So again, we're using the same sort of technique here of a combination of the brick uh, wall pieces and the terrain itself to make it look like a carved in wall. And we start working here with a couple of jails. Uh, whether or not animatronics are going to go here in the end, I'm not too sure. Uh, there isn't at the moment, but I do feel like at the end it looks a little bit sort of stale. It needs a little bit more movement. So I may end up coming and placing a couple of animatronics here. Try and find the best ones that uh, fit. The problem is, as we've said before, a lot of the animatronics in this game uh, are combative. And, you know, the, the, the guys in jails wouldn't... Uh, wouldn't have guns or anything, you know, we want somebody, ideally, uh, ideally we'd like something from Pirates of the Caribbean where there's the uh, the guy standing there shaking the bone at the dog, you know, but, uh, you know, obviously that's probably verging on copyright and maybe why you don't see that sort of stuff in the game already, I'm not sure. Uh, we need to do a bit of work here to get the floor tied into the terrain. It's a little tricky because it's quite near the ride, so we do a little bit of work with it. Uh, but then we have to go in with individual rocks and place them to fill in the gap between the ride and the uh, and the and the floor there. 
So again, we're using a couple of the skeletons here. It really would be nice to have some more options for skeletons. Like I say, a set of bones that we could uh, that we could modularly place ourselves would be fantastic. Uh, the other one here you'll see is there. There, it's on a wooden block. You can knock the wooden in, uh, block into the floor, into the wall, so you get more of a just sort of skeleton lying. Uh, they still have the chain on them, but I kind of think it just looks like handcuffs kind of works. A couple of swords and um, and a bit of rigging. I don't think we actually end up placing that down. Uh, but there isn't really much else we can add in here. So any suggestions that we could use to just sort of spruce this area up a little, make it a little bit more sort of dynamic, that would be great. Uh, with the lighting, it looks pretty smart when you come through uh, in the dark, but I just feel like it could do with a little bit more going on. Perhaps I will just drop a couple of animatronics with guns in here to make it look a bit like a jailbreak, um, as opposed to a sort of uh, ghost abandoned jail sort of thing that we've gone for here. And then, uh, yeah, it's just a case of rusing all these uh, rocks around the side. In them as close as you can. You can't quite get them flush, unfortunately, but for the most part, we get them all in. And when you're actually on the ride as well, you can't see the gap because of the angle of line of sight, uh, which is fine. Line of sight is something that is used very much in real parks, so I'm not too worried about that. Talking of real parks, theme park theory is coming on nicely, uh, but as I said before, I've got the possibility of getting some actual footage from uh, a Disney park, so. Uh, whether or not it comes through or not, we're not too sure yet, but we're working on doing that, so I'm holding out because that would be fantastic if I could get some real footage that's uh, specifically been filmed for what I'm talking about rather than having to try and find stock footage or just sort of images online. So I'm um, doing a little bit of hold on those because I want those to be really great quality for you guys, um, and I'm sure you'll be okay with waiting a little in return for them being a bit better quality. Uh, a couple of dusty bits here. <laughs> Dusty Bitch, I said she's a country western singer, isn't she? There we go, they come down there just to sort of create a little bit of movement. And the last bit is a little bit of lighting. We don't do too much with lighting here. Uh, light that a little up, and then here I wanted sort of a very sort of green, gloomy looking area. Again, it's almost spooky looking, really, as opposed to sort of full-on pirates. Uh, but, you know, you are going down into the jail here, so I wanted it to look a little bit creepy. Uh, so we use these sort of uh, deep greens instead and also they look really nice against the plants start to light this up realize i don't just want a, an open uh hole so to speak so uh, we use some of these these are really really versatile pieces these shipwreck pieces I've, we've already used them sort of three or four times in the area so far they've made an actual boat a shipwreck a tunnel entrance a path tunnel and a roof and each time they look completely different uh, just because of how you put them together. A really versatile piece and just shows how much care and detail Frontier put in to their scenery pieces that they must be aware when they're building stuff that they're going to make them sort of variable enough that they can be used in lots of different options. There you go. Right, back to daytime then for a couple of glamour shots. You can see it going into the tunnel there with the water over the top and there's a really grandiose view of the weenie. Look at that. I'm really glad with how that turned out. Obviously loads of work still to do around it uh, with all the uh, scenery behind and everything else. There's our first little jail piece like you see. Look the log glue goes flying past it and then there's the second there the spooky jail with the mist coming out of the jail cells. Looks great. So any suggestions what we can do there to make it look a little bit more sort of actionable that'd be great. And there's an overview of the park uh, or the pirate area of the park at least the pirate ship proudly standing on the docks there. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, pop them down in the comments. And if you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Sparrow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.